wake up in the morning, I get on my knees. I did learn from the master, he taught me to pray. I read on from the scriptures, the patience of Job. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. When you get into trouble, lift up your head and look up to the mountains where your help comes from. You surely have a refuge all night or day. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Why don't you trust in him? He's faithful and true. He promised to take us home on his soon return. Hold on and never look back. Believe in his word. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer and friend, the only comforter when you feel you are alone. He will be there when you cry out. Keep on your faith and live with hope. Jesus is the Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 It's another beautiful morning, and it's all about the mantle morning devotion. Start your day on your knees, brethren. I would like to ask you if you have done the needful already. If no, it's not too late. You can still do it. Brethren, you can still do it. It is never too late. You can still do it. Let's pray. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you for giving us another beautiful day. Lord, we are so grateful for your mercy, your love, and your kindness upon our la life. We thank you for our families. We thank you for everyone connected to us. Thank you, Lord, for everyone around us in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bless you. We give you praise. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Take absolute control over this program this morning once again. Let your spirit take absolute control in Jesus' mighty name. For I have no wisdom on my own. I have no knowledge, Father. Fill me with your wisdom and knowledge so I can speak to your people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Somebody shout hallelujah wherever you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Without wasting much time, le let's quickly let's quickly go into the Bible. Let's quickly go into the Bible and take something from Psalm twenty-seven, verse fourteen. And remember, today's topic that we are treating is wait on the promises of the Lord. Wait on the promises of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wait on the promises of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord. I'm grateful. Lord, I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's read what is there. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. 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 Wait.
wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Wherever you are listening or watching me from, sometimes our situation that we go through in life, we feel that God has no answer. It is never true. I've been saying something. God is always working out the answer for you. When you don't even see it yourself. If you can learn how to wait, how to wait on the Lord, it will surely deliver. God will surely deliver. Let's look at the amplified version of this verse. It's a wait and hope and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. Yes. I bring you another message of hope once again. I am only here as your brother to encourage you, to let you know that with God, everything is possible. Yes, if you don't know, with God, all things are possible. No matter the challenge that you are going through, He has promised us. There's a promise that God gave to us. If you don't know, there's a promise. And this promise is for all mankind. Yes. And I'm going to tell you about this promise. And I know through this, you will learn how to wait on the Lord. Through this, you do what? You will learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn how to wait on the Lord. With this, you learn how to do what? How to wait on the Lord. Reverend, I want to entreat you this morning. I want to let you know that God is faithful and always ready to help you through. God is faithful because He has made a promise to us. He has actually made a promise. Yes, and I'll let you see that promise right now. I will let you see that promise right now in his book. Reverend, God is faithful and just. God is faithful and just. He is faithful. He is a faithful God. And don't think that whatever you are going through, he has no idea about it. That's not true. God knows everything about you. He knows everything about you. And therefore, never give up. Never give up, no matter how the situation looks ugly in your life. Never give up. Never give up. Let's read something from the book of Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 11. Jeremiah 29, verses 11. Jeremiah 29. Verses 11. Let's see what the Bible says over there. For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. I think this is uh, a uh, amplified version. I want us to take the King James version first. Let's see what is that. Then you will call upon me and go and pray. No, this is I think verse eleven. That's what we want. Verse eleven. Yes, verse eleven. For I know the thought that I think towards you, says the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. It means that. God in his own wisdom promised man to help man through no matter the challenge man is going through. Yes. God has promised man to see man through any form of challenge in life. That is what the scripture is telling us. That, that God has a plan, a good plan towards every man on this earth. Any creature... 
be it of a, a human being, God has a good plan for you. He always wants you to end well. He doesn't want you to end in a way that you yourself will not be happy about. So God's plan for you, it is so sure and true. But there's something that normally happens. Yes, there's something that normally happens. What is that? There's something that normally happens. And what I want to say is that... What I want to say is, sorry for that interruption. What actually happened? We, 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 most at times, we don't even know that God has a plan for our, our life. So we normally complain. We normally say all kinds of things. And because we do not know the plans he has for us, we complain. We say all of the things. But brethren, if you know the plan of God concerning your life, you will always relax and be joyful and always learn how to wait on him at the appropriate time. Somebody say, oh, if God has promised you, then why do I have to wait? Why do I have to wait? Let's take the verse in uh, Amplified Version again. Let's see what is there. For I know the thought and plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thought and plans for warfare and peace and not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. Wow. It means that with all this, God has a good plan for mankind. He has good plan for you, brethren. Wherever you are watching me from, wherever you are listening to me from, God has a good plan for you. And I tell you, and he will surely do everything possible to make sure that this good plan that he has for you will be fulfilled in your life. But the only way out you can assess this good plan of God concerning your life, the peace that uh, the, the plan of peace that God has for you, the welfare, I mean, your well being that God, the only way out you can take hold of this is to learn how to wait. And as I said, somebody, well, if God has promised me, why do I have to wait? Why do I have to wait? Do I have to wait for what God Himself has promised to give me? Yes, you need to wait because God's time is the best. God's time is the best. Let's read some uh, uh, verse. Verse number 12 and see what is there. Verse number 12. The new King Jesus. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So in waiting, you don't just wait, but you must also do what? You must go and pray and he will listen to you. So in, in, in fact, the, the, your, your, your attitude of waiting to count a lot. What are you doing whilst waiting? Are you just waiting? You can't just wait. You must pray. Yes, prayer must be involved whilst waiting. You must continue to petition God in prayer whilst you are waiting. So if you are just waiting without prayer, I think, my brother, my sister, what the, the, the plan of God is concerning your life will never come to pass. So another thing whilst we, uh, what you must do whilst waiting is to go and pray. Learn how to pray. And, and God will listen to you. Let's take verse 13. Let's see what the Bible is saying in verse 13. Okay, let's let's take the Amplified Version in the verse 12 again. Then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray to me, and I will hear and heed you. Yes! Yes! This one, I think, is more deeper. You see, then you will call upon me, and you will come and pray they are all talking about the prayer prayer is very very is one of the key thing whilst waiting on god promises concerning your life so you must learn you must always pray prayer is the key prayer is the key whilst waiting on god's promises prayer is the key whilst waiting on god's promises jeremiah 29 verse 13 let's see what is there Let's take the and you can just version first. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Yes. So in the attitude of prayer, whilst you are praying and seeking God concerning his promises concerning your life, you don't just pray like that or you don't just pray, but you must seek God 
with all your heart. Yes, with, you must look for God with all your heart whilst you are waiting. So you don't just wait uh, or just pray, but you must do it with all your heart. It Whatever you are doing whilst waiting and praying, you must do it with all your heart. With all your because remember our heart is the communication point with God. If you want to communicate with God, is whatever how your God, your your heart is, that is how you must use it to communicate with God. Yes, that is how you must use it. So your heart is the contact point that God can work out that answer that you've been expecting from Him. Let's read something in the book of Habakkuk, chapter number two verse 2 the new king james version then the lord answered me and said and said write the vision and make it plain on tablet that he may run who reads it yes so whatever that you've been expecting from god this is what god is telling you that vision that whatever you have as your heart desire that you want god to do for you whatever plan is it you should continue like you should write it you should make it plain. You write it down. Yes. And you write it down. Then you continue p- praying about it. That is when you are learning to pray. You, you are learning how to wait. Yes. And let's see the Amplified Version. Let's see uh, the Amplified Version. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablet that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as he hastened by yes so whatever your heart desires whilst you are waiting whatever you are reading let it be like everybody know that this is what you are expecting god to do for you let it be seen clearly let god see that vision clearly yes that even every man can see if every man that means god can see it better so learn how to wait so let's read what habakkuk chapter number two verse three says for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it will speak and it will not lie though it may tarry, wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry amen thank you jesus this is what i am looking for this is what i want you to 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 get for the vision is yet for an appointed so that means that every promises of god or whatever you you are desiring god to do for you it has an appointed time yes not your time not my time not yours it has an appointed time yes so you cannot just think that once you want it for god to do it no no god has a time for everything the bible says there's time for everything there's time for everything that's in the book of ecclesiastes there's time for everything so you must learn how to wait and also wait for the appointed time that god must make whatever you are expecting from him to come to pass in your life let's look at the amplified version of this same verse i think this is the last verse we are taking for this morning so let's go for the vision is yet for an appointed time and it's hasting to the end fulfillment it will not deceive or disappoint though it is tarry wait endlessly for it because it will surely come it will not be behind behind hand or its appointed day yes so whatever God has promised, the time that God has promised, God will surely deliver. So yours is to continue waiting. Yours to continue waiting with all your hearts. Please, no matter what you are, I want to tell you that that plan that God has for you, you may receive a prophecy that God wanted to do something in your life. Please, never give up. Don't think that because that thing has not come to fulfillment, so it was a lie. No, if you can wait and pray earnestly with all your heart and wait on the Lord, I tell you that that which God has promised concerning your life will surely come to pass. Brethren, it is it is so sure when they come to the promise, of God, but your part, your role matters a lot. The role that you play, as I said, what are you doing whilst waiting? Are you just waiting? You must wait with prayer and not just prayer, you must wait and pray with all your heart and seek God with all your heart whilst you are waiting. So, waiting is good, but another thing you must do in prayer is when you seek the face of God with all your heart, when you can wait 
on God, letting him know that no matter what, whatever promise he has for your life will never delay, but surely come to pass. Yes, even though it seems uh, to you that is delaying, but remember that God's time is different from that of man's time. Yes, you cannot compare the time of God to your time. You cannot. It is it, there are two different things altogether. The time of God is what he desires to do his will concerning your life. And therefore, your time must not be considered at all. The time that you want God to know, it must not be considered. Remember, the time of God is the best. God's time is always the best. Best for you. And please, never doubt it. Never doubt it. When God wants to deliver it, he will surely deliver it perfectly. And you yourself, you rejoice forever there is time for everything there is time for everything so learn how to wait on the lord learn how to wait on the lord brethren learn how to wait on the lord learn how to wait on the lord learn all jo- all you need to do is to learn how to, how to wait on the lord because god will never give up on you he is always faithful and just to deliver his promises if only you can wait you can wait endlessly with all your heart yes learn how to wait endlessly with all your heart he is a faithful god i tell you he is a faithful god and he will never leave you nor forsake you he is a faithful god he is a faithful God. Learn how to lean on Him, no matter what. Learn how to lean on God, no matter your situation. Brethren, wherever you are watching, I entreat you this morning that no matter how your situation looks like, always learn how to wait on God. Because God will, will never give up on you. He will never give up on you, brethren. I tell you, God is not ready to give up on you. So you must also never give up on him never give up on god never 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 give up on god he is faithful and just to deliver that promise which he has concerning your life brethren i thank you so much for being part of this morning devotion thank you for your kind audience that you have given me it is just a privilege on my side to have you as my audience and let's let, let's pray this one let me pray for someone father in the mighty name of jesus christ by the power of the holy ghost father i plead your blood to go before us today let your mercy go before us today let your unconditional love go before us today let your protection go out be, be, go out before us today let your mercy go before us today in the name of jesus christ father by the power of the Holy Ghost, I pray for anyone that is sick this morning, whoever that is going through any form of affliction, Father, in the name of Jesus, be healed and be delivered now in the name of Jesus. Anyone that the enemy has taken hold of, Father, let them be released by the special grace of your Son in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for their deliverance. I pray for their healing. I pray for their freedom. I pray for their blessing this morning in the name of Jesus. May our going out be blessed. May our coming back be blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, you are faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. If you are somebody watching me or listening to me and you have not yet given your life to God Almighty, I am here to lead you into prayer. Pray these prayers after me. Lord God Almighty, Jehovah God Almighty, I thank you. And this morning, I accept your son, Jesus, as my Lord and personal Savior. I believe that he has died for my sins. And from today, I confess that I will worship him. And may my name be written in the book of life. Father, I thank you for saving my life today. In Jesus' mighty name. If you have prayed this prayer with me, wherever you are, can you find any Bible believing church? Join them and start worshiping God over there. And, brethren, I tell you, your life will never be the same. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for being part of today's morning devotion. Start your day on your knees. Thank you for being part. It has been your brother, 
Philip K. into me. Thank you. May our day be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.